Hey guys, it's Coven. Welcome to another professional wrestling YouTube video. Today we are going to be covering the Royal Rumble 2023. And let me just say, what a pay per view. Before we get to the whole meat and potatoes of the video, let me just ask you guys to please do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you are inclined to do so, and let's get straight into the video. So, starting off with what everyone is talking about, and that's the post-match of the Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns match. Now, the actual contest itself between the two men was pretty good. Kevin Owens was determined to destroy his back. Seriously, those bumps on the steel steps were brutal. But regardless of how good the match was, this was a story about what came after it. Roman Reigns, not satisfied with simply winning, goes on to torture Kevin Owens. Seriously, this was rough to watch at times. Everyone got theirs in. They got him. The Uso, Solo Sokoa, and then as Roman was about to hit him with a steel chair, as Kevin Owens was handcuffed to the ropes, Sami Zayn intervened, and this popped me so hard and it popped the audience in the arena so hard as well because this is long term storytelling at its absolute finest this is masterful and i was doubtful about kevin owens in roman reigns main eventing this pay-per-view i thought that it 100 percent should have been the men's world rumble but what a fool i was to doubt triple h because he knew exactly what he was doing here and he knew that the final image that we saw would be something that resonated with professional wrestling generations forever. As Sammy stops Roman from hitting Kevin with a chair, he says, you're better than this, this is beneath you. And Roman Reigns replies with, you're right, I shouldn't do it, you should. Sammy takes the chair, and after some brilliant fakeouts where it looks like he's not going to hit him, he finally, in a picture-to-picture -picture shot, of when Seth Rollins turns on Roman Reigns, hits him again with the steel chair. Now there's so many layers to this, so many things that we can discuss, like how Roman must feel to get stabbed in the back by another family member, or how Jay, the unbreakable spirit in the pandemic era when it came to challenging Roman Reigns, finally show a little spark of his old self when he rolled out of the ring and refused to take part in the beatdown of Sammy and the beatdown of Kevin. And the beatdown of my two fellow Canadians, let me just say, was hard to watch. Really, really hard to watch. The chair shots, the Samoan spikes, the super kicks. This was so hard to watch that it garnered a fuck you Roman chant. And the WWE did not censor it out whatsoever. Now, it might be because it was a pay-per-view, but the fact that we were able to hear those chants as loud as they were was special. That was a special type of heat, and Roman and Sammy and everyone involved in this storyline should be proud of what they have accomplished. This leads to many possibilities like Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns at Elimination Chamber. Now, obviously, Sammy's not going to win that match, but I think that it would transition very nicely into Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus The Usos. With this post-match angle, I want to see that match more than anything. Plus, Cody won the Rumble earlier in the night, and we'll talk about that too, so having Sammy in the tile mix might confuse the situation a little bit too much. But, let's delve deep into the start of the show, which was the Men's Royal Rumble, and this delivered really, really big for me. Now, I've seen a little chatter online where people were disappointed by the lack of surprises, the fact that we didn't get Muda, we didn't get Rock, we didn't get any real legends except for Booker T and... Booker T? <laughs> I guess? And while, yes, I would have preferred there to be more surprises, I thought we could have gotten a Cena or Orton, a Riddle, something like that but I am not disappointed at all about what we got as the finished product. Some notable things going through the match include number one and number two being Gunter and Sheamus, respectively. And they start off with just some heavy blows coming out, heavy blows. And as more and more participants came into the match, the more I understood Triple H's philosophy towards booking. In the post-pay-per-view press conference, Triple H spoke on how Rhea Ripley was so emotional 
at the end of her Royal Rumble match. She came backstage and she was just in tears. Triple H took her up and she said, don't do that because you're a star and you're going to have many moments like this going forward. He says that he wants to take superstars and bring them to the next level. And I totally understand that based on this Royal Rumble match. There are people like the Alpha Academy and the Street Profits that I personally would not have had in the match, but that's because I wanted to book the best Royal Rumble possible. While Triple H wants to make the best generation of stars possible, and that is 100% commendable. There were some insane spots in the match as well, including Cody's return and him being in the final two with Gunter alongside Logan Paul obnoxiously being great at wrestling again this time with the spot of the night Ricochet and him going to the top rope and then mid-air collision hitting each other with a clothesline <clears throat> perfect you can say whatever you want about the work rate of the night and of this match and matches going forward but the one thing that was consistent throughout was the storytelling and speaking of storytelling Let's get into some controversy, shall we? Because the two single matches that we had in the pay-per-view were both inside the Bray Wyatt universe of wrestling. Starting with the Pitch Black match, which was super, super cool. It looked super, super cool. There wasn't that much crowd reaction behind it, but I'm pretty sure that it was because it came right after the Royal Rumble match, which was a terrible idea. Why don't you just put Bianca and Alexa in that position, then lead into the pitch black match? But you know what, Bray Wyatt was never known for his classic in-ring matches. The whole thing looked cool and wasn't that long, so I don't have that much to complain about it. Bianca and Alexa, I'm a little bit less keen on. Like I said before in my previous video, I'm not the hugest fan on Bianca's title reign right now and this match didn't really do anything for me. The post-match angle also didn't do that much for me. I want this to progress a little bit further. We did get a cool shot of the Firefly Funhouse puppets that were in Bray Wyatt's return at Extreme Rules return here at the Royal Rumble. Hopefully we get some identity reveals soon because like I said, this is becoming a long story. And then finally, we get to talk about one of the other great things on this show, that being the Women's Royal Rumble. Now, in the early stages of the match, it was quite boring. There aren't enough over women on the roster, and there weren't enough legends in the match to make it feel like a really, really big deal. But after Asuka came out in her Kana, I think that's what her name was, attire, that got a massive pop, and it basically was a changing of the tide of the women's rumble. Everything that came after that was really, really solid, with the final three being made up of Liv Morgan, who came into the Royal Rumble at number two, Asuka herself, and Rhea Ripley, who came out at number one. After a few sequences and moves, you could see that Asuka spit the green mist into Liv Morgan's face, and then Rhea Ripley was able to eliminate them both on Liv Morgan with a beautiful Huracan Rana. And she was able to win the Royal Rumble from number one, which is a nice touch because Cody Rhodes won the Royal Rumble at number 30. So while that doesn't give us any story defining motivations, it is a cool little trivia fact to have in any professional wrestling pub game that you might play. But anyway, guys, this was a really, really fun pay-per-view. In total, I give this one a 5 out of 5, honestly. There are some people who didn't like the Bray Wyatt stuff in the pay-per-view, and that's completely fine. But for me, I would dig it. It was different. And if there is anyone who's allowed to be different in professional wrestling, it's Bray Wyatt. But that's just my opinion, guys. Let me know your opinions in the comments below. That's been me, Kobu, for today, and I'll catch you in the next video.